Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I'll explain you integrator using operational amplifier in great details. Before I start with explanation, let me show you how many things that I'm going to cover in this video. See, first I'll be explaining you basics of integrator. After that, I'll explain you input and output waveforms of integrator. After that, I'll explain you simple integrator using operational amplifier. And with this simple integrator, I'll derive output equation that is integration of input. After that, I'll explain you frequency response of simple integrator. With simple integrator, there are few limitations that I'll discuss here. And to overcome those limitations, I'll be designing practical integrator. And with practical integrator, I'll explain you frequency response after that. And at last, I'll be going to explain you applications of integrator. So let us begin this video with first agenda that is basics of integrator. See when it comes to basics, first of all, you should know integrator integrates input signal with respect to time. So if your input is V in, then output will be integration of V in with respect to time, right? This integrator that is used to identify low frequency components from input signal. So here, whatever low frequency components are there with input signal that is allowed to pass through it via integrator means that output side, low frequency components will be there. High frequency components are blocked by this integrator. What it means, this integrator is essentially a low pass filter, right? So sometimes there can be question in competitive examination. One should know integrator is a low pass filter. When it comes to waveform, one should know if input is square wave, then output will be triangular wave with integrator. Let me explain you how. See here, we have different inputs. First, I'll be considering DC signal input. DC amplitude is A with this input. So what should be my output? See integration means what? Integration means output will be integrated version of input. So after integration of constant A, output will be A into T. So A into T, that is ramp signal. A into T, that is positive ramp signal, right? So here, if DC signal input is there, then output will be positive ramp signal like this. Now, if you give input that is square wave, what will happen? Here you see with this range of time, positive A input is there. And with this range of time, negative A input is there. If positive A input is there, then output should be A into T, that is positive ramp signal. And if negative A input is there, then over here, output should be minus A into T, that is negative ramp. That is how square wave that is getting converted into triangular wave, right? Now here, if your input that is sinusoidal one, then what is my output? See, sinusoidal means here we have input that is Vm sin omega t. So what should be my output? Output should be integration of this. So that will be, you see, Vm is constant, sin omega t integration is 1 by omega and sin is converted into minus cos, right? So here output will be minus of, output will be minus of Vm by omega cos omega t. So minus of cosine means what? It will be initiated from negative maximum value and it is happening like this. So minus cosine signal that is like this plus sine signal that is like this, right? So integrator performs integration of input. See all these input output waveforms that is there as per ideal integrator, but with practical integrator, there are some limitations, all the limitations that I'm going to discuss in this video itself. First of all, I'll be explaining you simple integrator using operational amplifier. So here my agenda is to derive output signal that is integration of input. But before that, there are few basics that one should know. See with this circuit of simple integrator, we have negative feedback and this negative feedback that is given via capacitance CF. So in negative feedback, there is virtual ground concept. What is it? In negative feedback, potential at negative terminal and positive terminal is same. Here with positive terminal, potential is zero voltage. So 
at negative terminal also here potential will be zero that is virtual ground concept so virtual ground concept that is applicable in negative feedback one more basic that one should know see input impedance of this open that is very high so you can say current going inside over here that will be negligible or you can say zero so if i say current over here is ib so that has to be negligible or you can say it is zero now let us try to derive output equation so based on v in let us say current over here that is i in so this i in current that will come here that is getting bisected into ib and in this wing let us say over here through capacitor current is ic so first of all what i'll do is i'll apply kcl at this negative terminal right so here incoming current that is equals to outgoing current outgoing currents are ic and ib and incoming current that is i in here you see ib that is negligible so you can say ic that is equals to i in now what is ic see ic that is current passing through capacitor if i say potential across capacitor that is vc and as per the direction of current across capacitor polarity will be plus minus with vc like this right so here ic through capacitor that is capacitor cf into dvc by dt now what is i in so i in that is passing through this r at this terminal potential is v in so as per the direction of current that is happening in this direction i in that is v in minus 0 divided by r i in is v in minus 0 divided by r now here now here let us simplify this equation further what is vc so here if you observe at this terminal here we have zero voltage and at this terminal here we have v out voltage right so what is vc vc that is plus minus voltage so plus is zero minus is v out so you can say zero minus v out that is vc right so here we need to substitute vc that is zero minus v out right so now we can have further simplification of this equation you see how here i'm just taking dv out by dt over here right and i'm taking this cf on other side and this negative sign that i'm multiplying on opposite side so minus 1 by rcf into v in that is how further simplification will be there now we wanted to have v out here we have v out in terms of differentiation so to get v out we need to integrate this equation with respect to time so if you integrate this equation with respect to time then you will be having v out you will be having v out that is equals to see this is constant so i'm taking outside one minus one by rcf and integration of v in with respect to time that i need to write over here right so you can say you see v out that is proportional to integration of v in means this is integrator circuit right now here one more basic that one should know see this v out that is depending on this equation but this equation is valid only if initially vc is zero if initially vc is v0 plus then you will have to add v0 plus along with this v out let me note it down so if initially voltage across capacitor is v0 plus then i need to add v0 plus along with this so my v out will be minus 1 by rcf integration v in dt plus v0 plus right so that is my output so you can say output is integration of input right now what i'll do is i'll explain you frequency response of simple integrator 
what is frequency response frequency response is a plot of gain with respect to frequency so what is gain see gain is v out by v in see here we have negative feedback with inverting configuration so for inverting configuration gain is zf by z1 here zf is xc and z1 is r and here we have inverting configuration so i need to multiply minus sign over here now what is xc xc that is impedance of capacitance that is 1 by 2 pi f into cf right so let us substitute this over here so you will be having gain that is minus of 1 divided by 2 pi f cf r right so that is my gain here we are interested about magnitude so i don't need to consider negative sign so let us have magnitude of gain that is 1 divided by 2 pi f cf into r right now if you carefully observe this plot so that is happening as per this equation only how you see as you increase frequency gain that will decrease why the reason is frequency is there in denominator so if you increase frequency gain will decrease linearly so you see as you increase frequency gain is decreasing linearly right so that is how this gain equation is there and that one can plot it over here right now here one more basic that one should know see here let us consider let us consider here we have 0 db gain so at 0 db here we have frequency that will be f naught at 0 db we have frequency that is f naught so what is the value of f naught see f naught that is happening at 0 db right so one should know at 0 db at 0 db this gain this gain that should be equals to 1 where frequency f is equals to f naught so if you substitute gain is equals to 1 then 1 is equals to 1 divided by 2 pi f naught cfr so based on that you can say f naught is 1 divided by 2 pi cfr this equation is very essential one should know what is the frequency when gain is equals to unity that is 1 divided by 2 pi cfr where r is this resistance and cf is feedback capacitance right here with this frequency response with this frequency response there are few limitations that one should understand see at lower frequency range gain is very high because of gain is very high output of operational amplifier will get saturated at lower frequency range see here output is there and with this output if your gain is very high then your output cannot go up to infinite or you can say it cannot go up to so much higher value this value of plus v and minus v that is having some limitation this plus v can be around 15 voltage in your laboratory right this minus v can be around minus 15 voltage so output cannot go beyond plus 15 and minus 15 voltage so as gain is very high at lower frequency output is getting saturated over here so one should not have that high gain at lower frequency that is the issue with this circuit right second limitation is even if we operate at higher frequency output gets saturated due to input offset voltage of operational amplifier see this operational amplifier that is having some imperfection even if you don't operate at higher frequency let us say you are operating somewhere over here at higher frequency still because of input offset voltage over here output is getting saturated so how to overcome those issues for that we need to design practical integrator see in practical integrator what we do is we connect additional rf over here and rc over here you see with simple integrator this is the basic circuit with practical integrator we will be connecting rf over here and rc over here right so that is practical integrator now what will happen because of this rf and rc see because of this rf 
because of this RF, you will be limiting gain at lower frequency. See, at lower frequency, now you will be limiting gain as per RF by R only, right? So max gain, max gain, that can be RF by R only, right? Why the reason is, see, previously we were been having CF. So at lower frequency, XC, that was very high because of which gain was very high. But now we are connecting RF in parallel with CF. So now this parallel combination that can have maximum value of RF, right? So your gain that cannot go beyond RF by R because of RF. Now what will happen because of RC? See this RC that is limiting input bias current. So as if we limit input bias current, you cannot have offset and because of we don't have offset, output cannot get saturated. Now question is how to identify RC? See if you want to calculate RC, then that is simply parallel combination of R and RF. R parallel RF means R into RF divided by R plus RF, right? So that is how one can have additional two components that is resolving those limitations, those limitations which were there with this simple integrator. Now let us have frequency response of this practical integrator, right? So to understand frequency response of practical integrator, see response is a curve in between gain and frequency, right? So first of all, one should know, one should know what is gain over here. See, gain is what? Gain is V out divided by V in. Here we have inverting configuration with negative feedback. So my gain is minus of this impedance that is ZF divided by this impedance that is R. What is ZF? ZF is parallel combination of RF and CF. ZF is parallel combination of RF and impedance due to CF that is XC, right? So parallel combination that one should know, right? Divided by R. So here you see at lower frequency, at lower frequency, your gain will be limited by RF by R. Why the reason is at lower frequency, value of XC that goes very high. XC that is what that is 1 by 2 pi FCF. So at lower frequency, this XE that is having denominator which is frequency. So at lower frequency, at lower value of F, XE goes very high. So as if XE goes very high, this gain that is RF by R only, right? So you see here we are limiting gain up to RF by R only that one can observe. And here we have cutoff frequency that is FA and F0 that is a frequency at which gain is equals to 1. Now question is how to identify FA, right? Question is how to identify FA. See FA calculation that is happening as per cutoff frequency where cutoff frequency that is happening because of this RFCF combination, right? So FA will be 1 divided by 2 pi RF. CF, right? And this F0 frequency, that is a frequency at which gain is equals to 1 that I have already explained. That is a combination due to CF and R. So that is 1 divided by 2 pi R into CF, right? Now question is, in which range this integrator is working properly? So, but obviously in this range, in this range, integrator works properly. But if you want accurate integration, if you want accurate integration, then here, see, you will have to consider range which is 10 times of FA to F0, right? See, from FA onwards, from FA onwards, integrator functions properly. But if you want accurate integration, then you should be considering range from FA to F0. So whenever question is there based on accurate integration or range of frequency for integrator, at that time first you calculate FA as per 1 divided by 2 pi RFCF 
then 10 times of f a 10 times of f a to f naught that will be a range for accurate integration right where f naught is 1 by 2 pi r c f and f a is 1 divided by 2 pi r f c f right now i am going to discuss applications of integrator see integrator that one can use it for triangular wave generation if you have input that is square wave then output will be triangular wave right as well as integrator can be used for ramp generation here if you have dc signal input then output will be ramp signal for integrator in adcs in adcs means analog to digital conversions will be using this right so integrator that is used in adcs even in analog to digital conversions in closed loop control systems also we use integrator in pid controllers we use integrator pid means proportional integral derivative controller where integral controller that one can design with the use of this type of circuits right so that is how integrator is useful in many applications i hope you have understood and enjoyed this session still if anything that you like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video